In this presentation, we will take a look at an example of problem related to closing entries for the general fund. You'll recall the general fund is going to be on the modified accrual basis, and we have some added accounts we're going to have to deal with within it. We're going to have the budgetary fund balance accounts that we're going to have to close out along with the normal type of closing process. Our trial balance on the right hand side, we're going to put the entries on the left hand side. As we go through the trial balance, recall that this is the general fund. We go through the general fund, we're going to have the assets that are going to be in green. We're going to have the liabilities in orange. We have what would be the equity accounts in the light blue, the net assets, assets minus liability type of accounts. And then below that, we have the temporary accounts, what would be the income statement of type of accounts if we're talking about for-profit accounting. Temporary accounts, those accounts that we would expect within the closing process to be closing out to what would be the equity accounts for a normal financial type of accounting. Similar process here, we are going to take these blue accounts for the most part, which are going to be temporary type accounts for the most part closing them out to what would be the equity section that's in essence our goal so you'll recall the goal for a for-profit type of accounting when we do the closing process at the end of the time period we're going to roll over those temporary accounts to what would be the equity accounts here the temporary accounts for a for-profit typically being those below the equity section same kind of idea here we're going to say here's the equity section or the equivalent to the equity section assets minus liabilities everything below it is what we would expect to be the income statement type accounts that's where it gets a little bit muddy for a, a fund balance type account here within the general fund because we often we also have in addition to the income statement type accounts the estimated accounts so we have estimated revenue appropriations we got to deal with those and then also note that we have this encumbrances down here. That's going to be the funny one. So that's going to be more funny than even the budgetary account. So note that usually uh, we would want to do the same process. In essence, we're doing the same process. We're going to say, here's what would be the equity section. Everything below the equity section are temp temporary accounts in one format or another, either budgetary temporary accounts or normal income statement temporary accounts and then therefore will be closed out to what would be similar to equity type of accounts the light blue accounts however the blue account i mean the encumbrances down here just remember although there's nothing in it for us here not a problem for us now this is an account that is not a budgetary account not a uh, normal income statement account and not one that necessarily closes out in the same fashion that all other temporary accounts typically would so in essence we may not if there was a balance here close it out and i would think about this account as more of a clearing type of account one that starts at zero goes up and then goes back down but does so not as a normal temporary account does a normal income statement account at the point in time when it closes out to, at the end of the time period to what would be equity but rather it, it gets closed out or changes in some other time some other fashion some other trigger what will that be when we record the actual expenditures so just be aware of that the rest of this is going to be pretty much the same note that we have the debits are going to be represented with uh, positive numbers credits with negative numbers just as we have seen in prior therefore we see that the uh, the balance of debits minus the credits will be zero that giving us a quick check now there's going to be one other thing that's going to be a little bit more unusual before we get into what we would think of as the closing process typically which would be moving straight down to these dark blue accounts what would be the temporary accounts and that is that we're going to do what would we would normally think of as an adjusting entry for the supplies why are we going to do an adjusting entry for the supplies here rather than into period adjusting entries because it's going to be a little bit unusual with the fund balances because of the modified accrual basis and because of the way we want to assign out the equity section there's two methods that we basically deal with the supplies we'll talk more about those two methods later but we're gonna be using what we would normally think of as a periodic type system taking a physical count of the inventory supplies it's on the books as an asset and then we're going to adjust the supplies to that physical count which in this case is 188,000. the difference however unlike a normal adjusting entry which would go to an expense type account or at least an income statement account is going to go to an equity type of account so that's why we're going to put it here in the adjusting uh, journal and the closing journal entry process because we're going to be dealing with these uh these equity or similar to equity net asset type of accounts 
So let's do that first. Again, we'll talk more about the specifics of the, of the different supplies methods in a future presentation. We've got 188000 minus 175100. That's going to give us the 12,900. So we're going to adjust the supplies to the physical count by debiting it as we normally would with an adjusted entry. But the other side, instead of going to an expense or income statement temporary account, is going to go to a budgetary type account. It's going to go to the fund balance, non-spendable uh, inventory supplies. It's going to go here, and that's going to increase the supplies. And note that this amount here now matches our physical count. It matches what's in the supplies. And what that means, in essence, is that, hey, look, we're telling our reader, this is the net assets. It's going to be, you know, assets minus liabilities will be represented by the equivalent of the equity accounts. Part of those are something, and, and normally that we would think about those in terms of a temporary account or a short-term account fund accounting modified accrual as something that we might be able to use in the future. That's the net value. And we're saying, hey, look, this amount related to the inventory can't use that because it's already been purchased. It's in inventory. So we want to break that out basically separately. That in essence is the reason for the adjustment and the modified accrual related to the supplies and why we have to post it to what would be kind of like the equity type of accounts. All right. Next thing we're going to do is what we would normally do in the closing process, jump down to the dark blue accounts, which is what would typically be the income statement account, the temporary accounts, the one we would expect to close out to what would be similar to the equity type of accounts. A little bit more of a muddy transaction down here, though, because we have those budgetary accounts as well as the income statement accounts. And then this funny thing all together, this encumbrances. So instead of breaking out as we normally do oftentimes with for profit, uh, closing out the revenue and then the expenses possibly to a clearing account and then closing out the clearing account to something like equity retained earnings or a capital account. We're just going to do this with two transactions, closing out the revenue type and the expenses type accounts, but one transaction at the same time, but one for the budgetary accounts and the other for like the normal, like income, more income statement -y type accounts. So, so let's do that first for the, for the budgetary accounts. So we have to determine then which of these accounts are budgetary accounts, which of them are more income statement type accounts, and which of them are really weird encumbrances, not either of them. So we're going to say that this estimated revenue, that's going to be a budgetary account. It's got estimated in it. And note, uh, then we look at the balance to them. Revenue has a credit balance. Estimated revenue then will have the opposite to it. It'll have a debit balance. Estimated revenue has a debited balance. We need to make it go to zero Therefore, we do the opposite thing to it when we close it. We're going to credit estimated revenue to make it go down. And then the appropriations is kind of similar to the expense type, budgetary type account. Expenses or expenditures in the case of the, of the, of the general fund for the modified accrual has a debit balance. And therefore, the related kind of budgetary account is going to have the opposite, a credit balance. So the budgetary kind of expenditure account or the allocation of resources account, which is the appropriations account, has a credit balance. We need to make it go to zero. Therefore, we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which will be a debit. So we'll debit the appropriations. And then we also have this estimated other financing uses, has the term estimated in it. Therefore, it's an estimating type account, a budgetary type of account. It's got a credit balance. And we need to make it go to zero in the closing process. Therefore, we will do the opposite thing to it, which in this case will be a debit. So if we record this, then I'm going to build this journal entry and I'm just going to build it as is the order on the trial balance instead of putting the debits on tops and the credits on the bottom. Because uh, in practice, this is going to be the easiest thing for me to go back and review if I was to audit it or if I needed someone else to review it. However, if you're going to enter this into like a, a test question or a database program that's going to grade it based on, you know, debits on top and or if you have a picky supervisor or whatnot, then you're going to want to readjust this and put the debits on top. But again, even in practice, uh, it might oftentimes be nice to, to put the order, whatever order would make sense for you to read it in so that when you go back and interpret, if you have to, to see what you've done. Uh, it'll be easier for you to figure that out based on the order that you've put the information in. So we're going to credit the revenue account. So if we were to see this, we've got revenue as uh, estimated revenue is credited and it goes down to zero as we would expect. Then we're going to say that the appropriations, we're going to do whatever we need to do to make it go to zero. It has this in it. Uh, we debit it, it 
to make it go to zero. And then we have the estimated other financing uses. Estimated other financing uses has a credit. Therefore, we debited it to make it go to zero. Then we need the plug, the difference, the debits minus the credits, which of course is the seven one two three zero 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 plus the three two two five zero zero zero, the debits minus the credit of the three two two seven zero zero zero. That gives us the difference, the credit that is needed, the seven million one twenty one. And where's that going to go? It's going to go to this budgetary fund balance, and it should uh, zero out exactly because. Uh, this is the exact same budgetary account that we put in there at the beginning. So it, it should zero out. And basically that's what's in the budgetary account. That's typically going to be the case. We, we reverse it. It'll go back to zero. So note that the budgetary accounts should all basically tie out to, to zero. We're not going to be hanging around and having a, a budgetary fund balance. That's going to basically, you know, roll forward. We're going to put the budget on the books and then we're going to reverse the budget at the end of the time period it's going to go on the books and then we're going to reverse it completely so that's going to be those items and then we'll go to the normal kind of income statement type of items and these are the ones that we would most expect these look the most normal within our closing type of process we're left with basically what's under what would be the equity section normal more income statement t type of accounts revenue which has a credit which is what we would normally expect and we need to make it go down so we're going to do the opposite thing to it which is a debit expenditures which are like expenses they have debits and so we need to make it go down so we're going to credit those and then we have these other financing uses also debit balances here we need to make it go down to zero so we're going to credit those making it go down we're going to put the difference to an equity uh, equivalent type of account one of the light blue type of accounts we're going to put it into the fund balance unassigned so this is going to be the transaction once again we're building this i'm building this as it appears rather than necessarily in terms of debits on tops credits on the bottom revenue we have uh, up revenue is on the debits so we've got revenue and the revenue is going to be here we debited it to make it go down to zero and then we have the expenditures the expenditures are going to be here so debit and we credit it to go down to zero then we've got the other financing uses here and that's going to be a debit we credited it, it to go down to zero and then the difference between the due the credits minus the debits the plug that we need to be in balance is going to go to the equivalent what would be an equity account in for profit assets minus liabilities fund balance net asset type of account here that's going to be the 1 million uh 422 and it will go to the fund balance unassigned so the fund balance unassigned so we have that here decreasing the fund balance unassigned in this case and that's because the revenue is less than uh the expenditures and other financing uses so be aware of that we have revenue minus the expenditures other financing uses uh, uh revenue being less resulting in a debit balance as opposed to what would be the equivalent of net income which would have a, a credit balance if we have a in, in essence a net loss if it was a for-profit organization a debit balance we've now achieved the goal we have zeros in all the accounts below what would be the equity type section the net asset type section note again encumbrances is the exception we didn't have to deal with that here it is possible to have uh, the closing process and then have something still in encumbrances and encumbrances outstanding up top we've broken out what would be the equivalent of the equity section here now being assets minus liabilities note equaling equity which again would be what people within a government type of organization might say hey that's available for us maybe to spend or something like that in the future that's going to be the net value of the the fund here in terms of the general fund therefore we're breaking out and saying hey no look this inventory down here is part of the amount that is going to be non-spendable because we've already spent it it's it's basically representing the asset of inventory that's on the books and that's why we're basically going to break that out to, to tell our readers be as transparent as possible with regards to that so here we got the the full transactions in terms of the closing entry again remember that this first one you can kind of think of it as a closing entry because it deals with an equity type of account but it's also kind of like an adjusting type of entry because we are in essence adjusting the inventory and supplies as it's, we similarly would within the adjusting process for a for-profit we're just using kind of one of two methods in order to do that that's a little bit different to, to basically reassign 
the the uh, equity type accounts or what would be the equity accounts the net asset type accounts and then we have the reversal of the budgetary account which is down here which is kind of what we would expect because it's at least in the area where the income statement accounts would be and we're closing them out to zero as we normally would although the budgetary accounts wouldn't be on the books at all in a for-profit type of, of industry wouldn't we wouldn't post the budget and then we would do the most normal type of transaction within the closing process which is to actually close the equivalent of the income statement accounts the revenue and the equivalent of the expenditures uh, the expenses accounts the expenditures and other financing uses type of accounts and we're going to close that into what would be the equity account or similar to the equity account that being the fund balance